Welcome back to our Med Smarter Lecture Series, where we're taking a smarter approach to preparing future physicians. Before we get started, if you'll take just a quick minute and click that like button, and also subscribe and turn the bell on so that you'll be notified when we post new videos. Continuing on, uh, discussing more spirochetes, Leptospira and pterygans is a spirochete with hook-shaped ends that we see in uh, water that's contaminated with animal urine. So as you can see on the right here, this is an electron microscope view of this very, very small spirochete, and it has those hook-shaped ends uh, at the end of the particular bacteria. And it can cause two different kind of diseases. Leptospirosis, which is a flu-like disease, they get myalgias, uh, classically seen in the calves, um, jaundice, photophobia with conjunctival suffusion, which is an erythema without any exudate coming through, and then it can also be pre prevalent among surfers and those in the tropics because they're exposed to uh, those contaminated waters that have the animal urine in them. The other disease that it can cause is Wheels disease, uh, which is also known as an ictorhemorrhagic leptospirosis, and this here particularly causes a, is the most severe form, which gives us jaundice, azotemia, uh, all this from a liver and kidney dysfunction. Uh, we can see fever, hemorrhage, and then anemia also associated with Wheels disease. And then finally, our third spirochete here is going to be syphilis. So once again, spirochetes here are gram negative. This is caused by treponema pallidum. And we're going to jump ahead real quick here and discuss the treatment before we discuss the various types of syphilis here. So the treatment is penicillin G. Very, very simple and straightforward. Treat syphilis with penicillin G. The big key is, is recognizing it and recognizing it early before it becomes more disseminated. So let's talk about those different stages that we do have with syphilis. So primary syphilis is the initial infection where it's localized at the very location that it entered the body. It's going to have a painless chancre associated with that at its localized point, at its localized point. And we can see the syphilis microbacteria by using a fluorescent or dark field microscope and actually see those treponemes in that chancre. It's a painless chancre, uh, so a lot of times people might ignore it because it's not causing any pain or problems, but it is there uh, typically on the genitals. Secondary syphilis, however, is where we have that primary syphilis being more migratory throughout the body. It's disseminated with constitutional symptoms like a maculopapular rash, condylomalatas, lymphoadenopathy, patchy hair loss, and it's also confirmed with our dark field microscopy. We can do testing uh, for secondary syphilis using the VDRL RPR. Uh, VDRL stands for Venereal Disease Research Laboratory. And then the RPR is the Rapid Plasma Reagent. Uh, and that is going to be more nonspecific, where we can confirm that diagnosis using the specific FTA ABS test. And the FTA is the Fluorescent Treponemal Antibody Absorption Test. So remember, Primary syphilis is localized to one location. Secondary syphilis is going to be systemic. And then you can even potentially follow that with a latent syphilis as well. Continuing on in our discussion of syphilis, we will discuss tertiary syphilis. Tertiary syphilis is even further down the road, where we can see gummas, which are chronic granulomas, aortitis or vasovasorum destruction, then neurosyphilis, which is tabes dorsalis, a general uh, paresis of the body, and argyle robinson pupil are present in tertiary syphilis. Uh, signs associated with tertiary syphilis is going to be a broad-based ataxia with a positive Romberg sign, Charcot joints, and strokes without hypertension. In patients that have neurosyphilis, we need to test the spinal fluid. And we test that spinal fluid, we'll do a spinal tap, check it with the VDRL RPR, the FTA ABS, and the PCR test. We want to confirm if there is neurosyphilis to be able to treat it appropriately. Another form of syphilis that we can have is congenital syphilis. And this basically is where we get facial abnormalities in, in the newborn babies with brigades, which are linear cracks or fissures in the skin, uh, typically seen like in the angles of the mouth which you can kind of see here in this patient's photo. Uh, snuffles, uh, saddle nose, notched teeth, mulberry molars, short maxilla, saber shins, and cranial nerve 8 deafness. 
Those are our presentation for congenital syphilis. To prevent this, we want to treat the mother early in pregnancy to keep this from potentially crossing the placental barrier and transmitting itself to the infant during the first trimester. Mothers with syphilis need to be treated ASAP with that penicillin G to decrease the risk of transmitting it to her baby. So following up that discussion on syphilis, we're going to talk about VDRL false positives. So VDRL, or Venereal Disease Research Lab, is the test that we use for syphilis, and it's going to detect nonspecific antibodies that react with a beef cardiolipan. Uh, specifically here, the reason we use this is because it's very inexpensive and widely available to test for syphilis, but the problem is we can get false positives. Uh, here specifically, we see false positives often occurring alongside of uh, viral infections, uh, specifically like chicken pox and measles. So if you see some of those things, uh, even lymphomas, tuberculosis, malaria, uh, endocarditis, connective tissue disease, pregnancy, all of those can cause some false positives. So we need to be aware of the patient's current condition to determine could we have a false positive for VDRL uh, and also that helps us know that we need to continue on checking if we do have that a positive test that that's a, not a con confirmation but just an indication that we need to go to a confirmatory test that is more expensive. That particular beef cardiolipan basically is what the, the basis here is that uh, the antibodies that our body produces against the syphilis spirochete will actually react to an extract from an ox heart. So that's that beef cardiolipan, and it's actually diphosphatidylglycerol. So what they're looking for here during this test is checking for either IgG, IgM, or IgA antibodies against that cardiolipan, and you can actually see that in this test here on the right by having some foaming of the test tube or flocculation. So if we see one of these uh, windows that have foaming in it, then that is going to be a positive VDRL test. So you can remember the false positives with VDRL using positive VDRL as your memorization tool. And the P stands for pregnancy, V viral infection, D drugs, R rheumatic fever, and L lupus or leprosy. Like we said, there are some other things, but those are going to be your most common ones. Uh, viral infection, most likely measles or chicken pox. If you found this material helpful for your studying, please like and consider subscribing to the channel. Also, share this video so that more people can benefit from it like you have.